Reporter out of your Hildy, but you won't be half as good on any other paper, and you know it. We're a team. That's what we are. You need me, and I need you, and the paper needs me. All American. Oh, all right, God. Listen, Walter, please. If you've ever heard old movies or newsreels from the 30s or 40s, then you've probably heard that weird old-timey voice. This type of pronunciation is called the transatlantic or mid-Atlantic accent, and it isn't like most other accents. Instead of naturally evolving, the transatlantic accent was acquired. Now, this means that people in the United States were taught to speak in this voice. Now, historically, transatlantic speech was the hallmark of aristocratic America and theater. In upper-class boarding schools across New England, students learned the transatlantic accent as an international norm for communication, similar to the way posh British society used received pronunciation, essentially the way the Queen and aristocrats are taught to speak. It has several quasi-British elements, such as a lack of roticity. Now, this means that mid-Atlantic speakers drop their R's at the ends of words like winner or clear. They'll also use softer British vowels, dance, instead of dance, for instance. Another thing that stands out is the emphasis on clipped, sharp T's. Now, in American English, we often pronounce the T in words like writer and, and water as D's, but transatlantic speakers will hit that T like it stole something. Writer, water. But again, this speech pattern isn't completely British, nor completely American. Instead, it's a form of English that's hard to place, and that's part of why Hollywood loved it. There's also a theory that technological constraints helped Mid-Atlantic's popularity. According to Professor Jay Obersky, this nasally clipped pronunciation is a vestige from the early days of radio. Receivers had very little bass technology at the time, and it was very difficult, if not impossible, to hear bass tones on your home device. So what happened to the transatlantic accent? Well, linguist William Lebov notes that mid-Atlantic speech fell out of favor after World War II, as fewer teachers continued teaching the pronunciation to their students. That's one of the reasons the speech sounds so old-timey to us today. When people learn it, they're usually learning it for acting purposes rather than for everyday use. However, we can still hear the effects of mid-Atlantic speech in recordings of everyone from Katharine Hepburn to Franklin D. Roosevelt, and, of course, Count countless films, newsreels, and radio shows from the 30s and 40s. Now see here, Mr. Weathersby, there's no more money in dog racing. The future is radio, you hear me? Radio. Listen here, copper. You lay those mitts on me and I'll give you what for, I will. Say, doll, what say we go down the boulevard and catch the dirigible races? <laughs> I just like the giggles that we're gonna get the end. <laughs>